is up guys EJ here back with another video and uh, today it's gonna be my weekly movie review roundup um, episode 18 I believe or 17 I'm not sure um, so yeah I've got uh, seven films to talk about this week uh, been a busy week so uh, starting off uh, last Sunday on March 27th I watched uh, 99 homes uh, written and directed by Ramin Barani and starring uh, Michael Shannon <coughs> and Andrew Garfield. Uh, Andrew Garfield plays a single father uh, who loses his house which he's living in uh, with his son and his mother who's played by uh, Laura Dern um, and Michael Shannon is a real estate broker who works for the bank who sort of issues these foreclosure notices to these homes, turns up with the sheriff's department and make sure people exit their house. So uh, the bank is foreclosed on Andrew Garfield and his family and his home. Uh, so he loses his house, basically has to dump all his stuff on the street. Um, he works as a contractor, a building contractor, working odd jobs. So money is uh, difficult. Somehow he winds up working for Michael Shannon in this movie and he starts to make lots of money uh, sort of running these not really very uh, above the board scams of stealing equipment and appliances out of homes and then selling them back uh, to the banks and so on. So he gets involved with uh, Michael Shannon, uh, becomes his... Uh, his uh, his partner so to speak and uh, he sort of makes his money that way and he goes around does what Michael Shannon does evicts people out of their homes and uh, this puts tremendous pressure and tension on his family um, and the people he knows in the neighborhood the film set in Florida um, yeah it's a pretty decent film a uh, pretty harsh look at the uh, the housing crisis and the housing market and how hard it is uh, for working class people to sort of pay pay these mortgages and hold on to their homes. Um, yeah, it's good performance by Michael Shannon. He's really good. He's always good. Uh, Andrew Garfield was good. Um, but yeah, not a great film. I didn't really love it. The subject matter isn't really all that interesting to me. So I gave 99 Homes uh, Homes a 6 out of 10. Alright, moving on to Monday, March 28th. I watched uh, Woodlawn, uh, the first of a couple of sports movies uh, that I watched this week. Um, but this is a sports and faith movie uh, directed by the Irwin brothers, Andrew Irwin and John Irwin. Um, yeah, the film is set in uh, 1973 or 4. Uh, Montgomery, Alabama at the height of uh, racial tensions in that city. Um, it was known as uh, Bombgomery, uh, Alabama because of all the racially motivated bombings and killings that were going on at the time. Uh, Woodlawn is the name of the high school, uh, Woodlawn High School, which is now integrating uh, whites and blacks at the time and there's huge protests and all sorts of things going on. And uh, Sean Astin, of all people, turns up in the movie. He's like a uh, religious uh, faith movement. Um, he's not a priest. He's not a chaplain. He's he's just this guy that believes in Jesus, and he believes that bringing uh, Jesus to this uh, divided football team, uh, this high school football team, will unite them into a great team and so on, and it will sort of heal uh, the high school and the whole uh, community and of course it does that um, we've seen uh, high school football movies where there's tension between whites and blacks um, remember the Titans of course with uh, Denzel Washington comes to mind but this film really lays on the whole Jesus and prayer thing uh, before the games uh, pretty thick and it was just surprising to see Sean Astin in this role um, uh, let's see, Nick Bishop plays the uh, high school coach, and the film sort of revolves around two central players. Uh, one uh, is called uh, Tony Nathan, who was the star running back um, for Woodlawn High School. High school, He's played by Caleb uh, Castillo, or Castile. Um, 
Yeah, so and then there's the uh, the rival team has has the best quarterback in the uh, in the state, and he's white. Uh, John Voigt plays uh, legendary Alabama football coach uh, Bear Bryant. So actually, he has some good scenes. I liked uh, John Voigt as uh, Bear Bryant, and funnily enough, I liked Sean Astin, um, even though he's sort of pounding the Bible. Um, not really my thing. I've always liked Sean Astin, of course. Uh, from the Lord of the Rings and Goonies and Woody, um, yeah, he's he's a good actor and he's a likable guy. So he carries it off, even though these faith-based movies, faith and football is what this film really is about. Uh, Woodlawn. So I I enjoyed it on that level. Some good football scenes. Uh, so Woodlawn, I gave a seven out of ten. All right, moving on to uh, Tuesday, uh, March 29th. Finally got a chance to see uh, The Hateful Eight, of course, uh, written and directed by Quentin Tarantino, uh, the eighth film by uh, Tarantino. Um, I guess he considers Kill Bill uh, one film, uh, which I found interesting. <laughs> I was doing the math in my head uh, when I saw that. Um, but yeah, um, not his best in recent years, uh, but still very good, very enjoyable. Um, of course, a western, uh, spaghetti western, if you like. Um, yeah, the film starts out with uh, Samuel L. Jackson standing on the uh, side of the road in uh, snowy uh, terrain. Uh, the film is set in Wyoming and he uh, stops a stagecoach uh, which uh, contains uh, uh, Kurt Russell's character who's a bounty hunter uh, who's transporting a prisoner um, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Daisy Darmagoo. Um, yeah, Kurt Russell is nicknamed the Hangman because he doesn't kill his uh, his uh, captives, his uh, bounties, because um, bounties in those days were dead or alive, so most of them just killed him and brought him in uh, to collect the money. Uh, but he wanted to always see his prisoners be hanged. Uh, don't cheat the Hangman if you, if you like. Um, so yeah, they uh, they met each other, uh, Samuel L. Jackson and Kurt Russell, back uh, during uh, the Civil War at some point. So they have a history, and so he offers Samuel L. Jackson a ride. Uh, they're on their way to Red Rock. Um, again, they encounter another guy who's uh, who's freezing out in the cold, um, and he's played by uh, Walter Goggins. Uh, great performance by him. Um, he's going to be the new sheriff in Red Rock, so... Uh, he's basically the guy who's going to uh, put Daisy uh, Damagu to death. Um, so they have to give him a ride as well, even though he's part of uh, uh, the renegade, some sort of uh, uh, southern um, militia group uh, during the war uh, that fought against the Union, uh, the Yankees. Um, and Samuel L. Jackson obviously uh, was a Union uh, colonel. Um, and uh, Kurt Russell, I forget what he was, but he's a bounty hunter now. And uh, Samuel L. Jackson's a bounty hunter as well. Um, eventually they end up at Minnie's uh, Haberdashery, which is just this sort of big uh, hut where people can uh, get coffee, hopefully it isn't poisoned, um, and get a warm bed and a warm meal, put their, uh, feed their horses. And there they encounter a whole bunch of other people at uh, Minnie's Haberdashery, and that's where most of the film takes place. Being a Tarantino film, it's very talky, uh, which is always good, because uh, the dialogue is great. Um, yeah, the rest of the cast includes um, uh, Tarantino veterans like uh, Tim Roth, uh, who plays the hangman, uh, Michael Madsen, um, who else is in this, uh, well, what's his name, Bruce Dern, uh, terrific as an old southern general. Um, who knows uh, Walter Goggins' uh, father and is familiar with him. Um, James Parks uh, plays Obi, uh, who's the driver of uh, Kurt Russell's stagecoach. Um, and uh, that pretty much covers all the main players. Uh, there's a small appearance by uh, Zoe Bell, uh, who of course has appeared in uh, Death Proof. Uh, most famously uh, in one of Tarantino's other films. Yeah, a lot of fun. Some Samuel L. Jackson, just terrific. He commands the screen. He's he's just perfect for Tarantino's dialogue. And <laughs> Jennifer Jason Leigh gives a fantastic performance as uh, Daisy Domagoo, the uh, prisoner in question, and um, who she's connected with. 
Um, I won't go into detail about what happens because there's a lot, of, a lot of shit that goes down in, in that uh, haberdashery. Uh, but it's really bloody, some great sort of slow motion um, uh, gun play. Um, yeah, just lots of interesting dialogue. Uh, I will say I thought it was a bit too long. I mean, it's almost three hours. It's two hours and 48 minutes, something like that. Uh, but Tarantino, uh, with a great cast and a great script, still loads of fun, really entertaining stuff. Uh, but not as good as uh, Django Unchained or um, Inglorious Bastards, his most recent films. And I'm not nearly on par with his, his great... Uh, early movies like Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, Jackie Brown, uh, Kill Bill, and so on. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd probably rank it ahead of Death Proof, uh, but behind all those other films I mentioned. So if you're ranking Tarantino films, I would put this 7th out of 8th, in my personal opinion. But still loads of fun. Samuel L. Jackson and Jennifer Jason Lee, just fantastic. Uh, and supporting cast, all terrific as well. Okay, uh, alright guys, moving on to uh, Wednesday, uh, March 30th, I watched uh, Creed, uh, directed by uh, Ryan Coogler, uh, of course starring uh, Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone, uh, yeah, Michael B. Jordan uh, plays Adonis uh, Johnson, or Adonis uh, Creed, uh, the son of former boxing great Apollo Creed. Uh, played by Carl Weathers in the former Rocky films. Uh, he gives up a uh, sort of um, office career in Los Angeles uh, to go back to Philadelphia to uh, find uh, Rocky Balboa, uh, who he wants uh, him to train him. Sort of uh, the legacy of his father. He's sort of shunning. He doesn't want uh, Apollo Creed's name attached to him. That's why he goes by the name of Adonis Johnson. Um, yeah, really, really terrific film, uh, great boxing movie, one of the best uh, Rocky movies in recent years, of course. Um, Sylvester Stallone, wonderful as Rocky Balboa, who's very deserving of his Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. I'm not sure if he got robbed uh, as far as the win goes, because uh, I really did like, um, uh, what's his name, uh, who won for Bridge of Spies, uh, Mark Rylance. Um, Mark Rylance doesn't have nearly as much screen time as uh, Sylvester Stallone does. But yeah, Michael B. Jordan's terrific in the film. Uh, after he moves in the in the Philly into a small apartment, he has a uh, uh, sort of romantic relationship with his uh, neighbor, uh, played by uh, Tessa Thompson, who plays uh, Bianca. Uh, she's a singer uh, who's going deaf. Um, but yeah, the boxing scenes are really terrific. Um, really good actually, some of the best boxing movies I think I've ever seen, uh, just really up close and really good. Um, there's only a couple of fights, there's like, he has one fight with, uh, one of the guys he works with at the gym, uh, who's like the son of, uh, the guy who owns the gym, and he wins that fight, and then all of a sudden he gets a title shot with, uh, the big badass from, uh, Liverpool, England, uh, pretty boy, Colin, whatever the hell his name is. And the, uh, the fight takes place at Goodison Park uh, because he's an Everton fan, uh, which I found completely hilarious, <laughs> especially since uh, I know uh, Liverpool and uh, uh, the whole Li Liverpool-Everton rivalry and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was interesting. Um, but yeah, as far as the Boston scenes, the Boston scenes were terrific. Uh, the performances were terrific. The music, when it kicks in at the end, that's really a great moment. And, uh, yeah, Sylvester Stallone really adds a great sort of weight and uh, gravitas uh, to the role as Rocky Balboa. And now he's like this old beat-up fighter who doesn't want to do this anymore. He just wants to run his uh, little uh, restaurant affectionately named after Adrian, which I, I found nice. Uh, but, yeah, it's a terrific film. Uh, so Creed, I gave an 8 out of 10. All right, moving on quickly uh, to uh, Thursday. Um, the 31st of March, I watched, uh, The Danish Girl, um, yeah, directed by Tom Hooper, uh, starring, um, Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander, um, yeah, really terrific film, I really enjoyed this film a lot, um, mainly because of the performances, uh, and, and especially Alicia Vikander, um, yeah, they play, uh, turn-of-the-century, uh, artists, painters, 
uh, in Denmark. Um, Eddie Redmayne plays uh, Einar Wegener, or Wegener. I'm probably saying that wrong. And he's married to uh, Alicia Vikander, who plays uh, Gerda uh, Wegener. Um, but of course, Eddie Redmayne has a sort of split personality. Uh, he's a woman uh, trapped in a man's body. Um, and he creates this uh, alter ego, uh, Lily, uh, Lily Elby, Elba. Um, yeah, they first, he sort of enjoys putting on uh, women's clothes to pose uh, for his wife uh, while she does her paintings. Uh, but then they sort of take it uh, too far and they dress him up as a full on girl as sort of a joke for this party. And he sort of, it's what he becomes infatuated with, and that's all he wants to do anymore. Um, there's sort of a weird relationship he has with a, a man uh, that he meets at a party as well and they kiss. Uh, the man is played by uh, Ben Wishaw as well um, from uh, Skyfall and uh, another movie I saw a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, really good performances. Alicia Vikander is the one that really blew me, blew me away. Um, she was terrific in Ex uh Machina, but she was fantastic in this uh, because at first she fights the whole thing that uh, Eddie Redmayne is turning into this woman and always dressing up as uh, um, Lily and going out with men and doing whatever but she, her paintings become a huge success uh, when he's when she starts painting him as Lily and because before that her art wasn't being recognized uh, but when she paints Lily uh, she becomes successful because of it so eventually she sort of embraces the whole Lily concept and I found that sort of amazing because she's basically losing her husband um, and she becomes very sort of supportive and uh, relenting of the fact that this is who he is. Uh, he's he's not, not a Einar anymore and uh, the second half of the film really deals with the prospect of uh, uh, gender transformation actually performing surgeries, uh, removing the male genitalia and building uh, the female one and the complications and the dangers that goes that uh, entails because it's like the first surgery uh, of its kind. This film takes place in the early uh, like 1920s or something like that, 19 teens even. Um, so yeah, the, the complications that come with uh, doing this type of surgery and so basically Lily Elba uh, is a recognized pioneer in uh, uh, gender transformation but the film really is hinged on these two great performances and I thought Eddie Redmayne was terrific I've seen some complaints online that people don't buy him as a girl uh, which I find kind of odd to be honest. So yeah as I was saying the whole the complaint about Eddie Redmayne not really passing as a beautiful woman I find sort of offensive to be honest um, because in those times he, he passed off as a woman um, and he does it quite well and that's not really the point um, it's a terrific film and I thought the performances were wonderful uh, Eddie Redmayne terrific and Alicia Buchanan absolutely fantastic uh, really deserving of her uh, her Oscar win for Best Supporting Actress. So The Danish Girl I liked a lot. Um, I gave a 8 out of 10. Really beautiful score as well. Um, I forgot to mention the score of course for uh, The Hateful Eight. Uh, won Best Score. Uh, Ennio Marconi score. Um, not his best score but it's still a terrific score. It's just great music. So yeah, but the music and uh, the Danish girl and the costumes and everything was wonderful as well. Okay, moving on to uh, uh, April 1st on Friday, I watched uh, I Smile Back. Um, yeah, the film starring uh, Sarah Silverman, um, directed by Adam Salkey. Uh, Sarah Silverman plays a normal uh, housewife uh, dealing with her husband and her uh, two kids. Um, but she's a very uh, has a very destructive personality. Uh, she does the drugs that she wants, uh, sleeps with the men she wants. Uh, she's actually sleeping with her her best friend's husband. Um, yeah, it's a really gritty, gutty performance by Sarah Silverman. I mean, this is somebody I just associate with sort of uh, a silly personality and really good comedian. Um, 
but yeah, she's terrific in this film. She is the whole movie. Um, yeah, she uh, she basically almost has an overdose one night uh, while she's basically making her kids uh, lunches for school the next day, and she basically gets forced into rehab by her husband, uh, played by Josh Charles. Um, she goes to rehab for a while, comes back, and then like nothing changes. She still uh, drinks and does drugs, uh, screws uh, guys in alleys behind bars, uh, and then gets beaten up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a tough film to watch, but but um, not only a very sunny uh, subject matter, but I admired it mainly because of Sarah Silverman's performance, something you would not expect from her. Uh, she's terrific in the film, even though it's pretty unexpected. So, uh, sort of reluctantly, I gave I Smile Back a 7 out of 10, and the only reason I gave it that high is because of Silverman's performance. Uh, but the film as a whole, I did not really enjoy it <laughs> as a watching experience. Okay, moving on finally uh, to last night. I skipped uh, I skipped Saturday. Um, yeah, Sunday last night, uh, April third. I watched uh, Concussion. Um, yeah, written and directed by uh, Peter uh, Landisman, and of course starring uh, Will Smith as uh, Doctor Bennett. Uh, Owalu, or uh, something like that, Omalu, a uh, Nigerian-born uh, pathologist uh, working in Pittsburgh, and who, of course, discovers that uh, repeated brain trauma uh, to NFL football players is causing them uh, to sort of go mad, go insane, commit suicide, uh, do irrational things. And he's the first one to really give a name uh, to this phenomenon uh, called CTE. Um, it was kind of big uh, four or five years ago when very famous football players, uh, most notably uh, Junior Seau, uh, former San Diego Charger great linebacker, committed suicide. Um, so yeah, it's based on a true story. Of course, uh, some got a lot of flack because of uh, Will Smith's accent, his Nigerian accent. Tell the truth! Um, yeah, but it's it's a decent performance by Will Smith. And again, it's really about um, one man with the help of his colleagues, well, with, with the help of his boss, uh, taking on the juggernaut that is the NFL and how much the National Football League uh, try to keep this whole phenomenon uh, quiet. I mean, um, yeah, the amount of uh, uh, concussions and that were never documented before the concussion protocol, which is now um, sort of paramount in pro football right now, um, even though there's still incidents uh, this past year of guys getting knocked out and going back into the game. Um, after just sort of standing on the sideline avoiding one play that uh, still still happens but repeated uh, bashing into each other uh, has really taken a toll on former NFL players and this doctor uh, brought it to light uh, Alec Baldwin is in the film as well he plays uh, uh, plays a doctor as well who used to be a trainer uh, with uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers um, yeah, he has a weird relationship with a girl, a nurse, uh, who moves into his house and then all of a sudden they're about to get married. Uh, so that whole angle of the film I did not care about at all. Um, I didn't find the actress interesting at all. Um, Albert Brooks was good um, as his boss. Um, there's, he has a great line at the beginning about, about the NFL. They have, they own a day of the week, uh, which is so true. Uh, Sunday and NFL is sort of synonymous. Um, David Morris plays uh, plays the, the guy who, who dies early on, who used to be a, uh, a football player, a center. Uh, he plays Mike Webster, um, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Um, so he's the one who sort of kicks off the movie. He's like going crazy and uh, David Morris is a good actor. Um, I know Scott would appreciate that I mentioned his name uh, if he ever watches this video. So yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm interested in football, obviously in the NFL. I watch it every Sunday uh, in the fall and play fantasy football and all that kind of stuff. And I already knew about this uh, CTE uh, phenomenon and being brought to light a few years back. 
um, and how, how much the NFL tried to squash it, really. Um, so on that front, I, I, I was interested in watching it. Um, but yeah, it's not a great film, per se, but it's well made. Uh, Will Smith does his best. So yeah, anyway, Concussion, I enjoyed it because of the subject matter. Keep getting cut off. This uh, camera only good for like six minutes of recording. Really annoying. Um, so I gave Concussion a 7 out of 10. So uh, there you have it. Uh, seven films. I watched this past week. Some good movies in there. Um, especially uh, in the middle of the week. So let me know what you think of these films. Uh, thank you for watching as always. And I'm sure this video is going to be too long as usual. Uh, but until next time. I'll see ya. Bye.